Hello and welcome back to Simple Life with Rob Pusateri. I'm just going to read a little scripture today, if that's okay with you. I'm in Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start in uh, verse 24. In another parable, he put forth to them, saying, this is Jesus speaking. Now the words are about to turn, the letters are about to change to red. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But, when men, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How, does, how then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the, the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, Gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. This parable reminds me of a time where I was out doing um, street ministry. The Lord had called me, empowered me um, for three years to go out and do ministry on the streets. Um, it was without a doubt the most exciting time of my life. He allowed me to see some incredible miracles, some incredible, incredible miracle signs and wonders, um, for those three years. It was awesome. It was really awesome. And, um, but I remember one night, <clears throat> one evening before I went out, I was sitting in the park, in the city park, and I sat there on a picnic table and I was praying. And I said, Lord, Lord, bind the principalities and the dark forces so that when I walk down through this town, there's nothing they can do but bind them powerless um, so that basically it would be easy to, um, to go through and just shine. The power of God would just flow. <laughs> and he almost knocked me off the table when he said, no, I will not. He said, I want you to shine in the midst of that darkness. So there's a lot of times that we don't understand exactly the whys, the hows, <laughs> what's going on. I was shocked. I'm Seriously, it hit me so hard, I almost fell off the table. Um, but he says here in verse 29, Matthew 13, 29, but he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the time of the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather the tares and bind them into bundles to burn. So trying to make sense out of all this. Why wouldn't the Lord just make it easy on us and... Um, just remove the tears. Now, let me read his teaching on this parable. Uh, we're still in Matthew 13. We're going to go down to verse... Okay, verse 36, it says, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. His disciples came and asked him. 
And he answered them, verse 37. He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will, ga they will gather together out of his kingdoms all these things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping, I'm sorry, wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in their kingdom of their father. He who has ears to ear, let him hear. Um, so the Lord explains that the wheat is um, represents those who are righteous in the eyes of the Lord, which means those who trust him, and those who have placed all faith in him and not in their own capabilities and abilities, um, and have a relationship with him. Remember Jesus said um, in John 17, 3, that this is eternal life, Father, that they may know you um, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And he also says in, in, in Matthew 7, um, Jesus talks about... Um, You, know, you have done all these things in my name, but I, depart from me, I never knew you. So there's a relationship here. Um, so the wheat represents the righteous, those who know him and are known by him. The tares, the enemy has sown them, the devil. The tares are the sons of the wicked one. These are the ones who literally fight against God. They, they try to, remember, they were planted with us, um, with the righteous. They were, their, their, their goal is to cause us to be choked and stumble. But the Lord said, let them both grow together. And um, I don't believe this is so that we can try to turn the weeds into wheat. There's more going on here. And um, I challenge you to pray about this and ask the Lord what's going on. Remember my, my little testimony of asking the Lord to remove the powers of darkness in the area where I was about to go do evangelism. And he said, no, I will not. And I want you to shine through it. In my own heart, I believe that there is the reason behind all this. Um, just the same as, as when the Lord said to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Um, just the same as Jesus was, uh, when he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at River Jordan, when the Spirit came upon him and anointed him, fulfilling the Christ, anointed Messiah, um, the first thing he did was send him out into the desert to be tested by the devil. There's a reason behind all this stuff. And I'm just going to say I believe it has to do with the warfare. I believe those who take what the Lord has given them, these capabilities, these abilities, these empowerments, these anointings. I believe that those who are willing to, just say it, get off the couch, get out of the pew and get in the fight. Those who are ready to actually do something rather than just sit in their pew and on the couch waiting for the Lord Jesus to come and take them home um, so they can go to heaven and live in paradise. But those who are actually in this battle, who 
want to engage in the battle, who want to fight against darkness, who want to help those who are being beaten up by the darkness, those who are being afflicted and, and, and oppressed. We need to shine through the darkness. We need to shine in the midst of that darkness. Remember, you go into a dark room, light one little match, and see how much it brightens up the room. And that darkness cannot snuff out that light. Cannot do it. It's impossible. And that's who we are if we've trusted in Christ, if we truly know him. So we must both grow, to grow together. The light and the darkness grow together. And we need to outshine. And there's a reason for all this. I believe in the end, when it comes time, um, and you can read in Matthew chapter 5, I'm sorry, chapter 25, where those who take what the Lord has given them and invest it, use it, move forward in it, he blesses them in the eternal kingdom, in heaven. They are blessed. He says to the one who, who uh, had 10 cities, you could read it, it's not that far away. <clears throat> um, in the parable of the talents, uh, um, uh, Matthew 25, 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he said, I'm sorry, so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, and I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is, I've said it before, this is a training ground, a training ground for heaven. It's what it is. It's a, maybe it's a training ground for the millennial kingdom, for the thousand year reign. Maybe those who engage in the battle now, the Lord has, I mean, that's our testing. That's our testing to see if, if we're going to do anything in the future. You know, we have no idea what's going to go on in the millennial kingdom. It's a thousand years. It does say that those, there are those who will reign with them. And I believe it says there are others who will sleep until it's over. So all I know is I want to be the one, I want to be one of those who engage in battle. I want to be the, one of the ones where when he gives the parable of, of the seed that's, that's spread, um, he talks about the seed being spread on the rock and the wayside and and uh, on, on good soil and, and stuff like that. Um, I want to be one of those ones that are considered a hundredfold, who gain a hundredfold. Not one who falls away. So anyway, I hope I've encouraged you to, um, to get into battle. Get into battle and, and, and fight against the darkness. Don't live a mundane life just sitting around waiting for Jesus to come back. Because you never know. He might not come back in your time, in your lifetime. He might not come back until after the Great Tribulation. Are you going to have enough faith to make it through it? Have you done anything to increase your faith? I mean, faith is like a muscle. You don't exercise it. It's pretty puny. <laughs> so anyway, I'll quit rambling. God bless y'all. May you be encouraged. Um, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. Um, please feel free to, to leave any comments. Uh, and I will answer them as soon as I see them. So God bless y'all. Have a great day.